time do we have together? Uh, as much as you want or as little as you want. I think I got my next one. <laughs> we got plenty of time. I'll, I'll leave it to you to, if you get bored, you let okay. me know if you well, free, I, let me know. I got a list of questions. So if I can get through them all, that's. that's First of all, where are you? Uh, I'm in uh, Magnolia, Arkansas. It's a small town in Southern Arkansas, sort of near the uh, Texas and Louisiana borders. But uh, nice. I'm, I'm I'm from San Diego originally, and we're here because of my husband's job. So nice. Yeah, I'm in Bend, Oregon. Oh, okay. Are you filming something there? Oh no, no, I live here. Oh, you I live there. I left LA about six, seven years ago. Oh, cool. Uh, is it, I, I've heard the name Bend. Is that is that near uh, any of the cities I've heard of? It's um. Two hours south of Portland, okay. and uh, it's in the Cascade Mountains. Oh, okay, it's nice. I'm sure it's pretty up there. It's gorgeous. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah. I uh, have a friend who lives in Portland, and I've been up there a few times. Uh, once we drove up from San Diego, like up through there and Washington, and everything. It's beautiful up there. So. Awesome. Yeah. Um, well, it's great to speak with you. Um, I watched and watched all of the CW superhero shows. So I saw you on Legends and all the crossovers. I didn't like when your character left or when Kendra left, though, but because mm -hmm. I grew up reading the comics and including Hawkman and the Justice League. And so I like the heroes that I was more familiar with, like yours and the Adam and the Flash. So Every time yeah. they change, they change the, the the cast of that show constantly. They <laughs> did, yeah. There was a huge, <laughs> there was a huge shuffling going on with all the characters. I agree. Yeah, and I, I, I don't. I mean, it made it interesting, I guess, and probably good for the writers because they had new people to write for. But I'm not sure that was good for the show's ratings constantly because mm -hmm. you know there's a lot of people that like like a certain actor or character, and if they go, then they stop watching. I, I think yeah. that's. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so was it fun to play Carter Hall back then? Uh, yes. Yeah, there was a lot of fun in it. Um, I'm very like split down the middle on that job and, and playing Hawkman. I, you know, I'm mm -hmm. very open about it. I don't have any gripes about it, but I was so excited about this character. It's one of the coolest superhero characters I think there is mm -hmm. um, as uh -huh. far as like for an actor goes because you have 206 lifetimes to draw to you have the perspective of having gone through so much stuff like i just said in another interview hawkman carter hall must kind of always be on the verge of insanity like, can you imagine doing covid over and over and over again <laughs> yeah and then it's not covid it's wars it's loss it's it's hardship it's joy. It's it's this human experience, you know. And uh, I had a lot of fun with what we did do, and I was very challenged because I didn't, um, I didn't get to do what I wanted to do. You know, mm -hmm. the thing that I fell in love with about Carter Hall, even the audition pieces, were removed from the from the show, um, wow. and they they kind of like hinted at. Hawkman's past and who he's met and who he's been with and who he's seen and so I imagine there's going to be flashbacks and pieces about that and maybe a show you know I felt like there was so much material mm -hmm. um and I heard one of the writers I won't name anybody but say uh yeah there isn't much more story to tell you know so we kind of just sent you guys off and I was like what <laughs> I don't understand at all yeah. uh, I don't think we told I don't think we told enough story um so I enjoyed what I got to do. It was the people were all, I made really great friends. Casper Crump and I became uh, besties and I I respected everybody on the show and people were nice to me. You know, they treated me kindly enough and, and that I could have a good time. And the young artist in me was was a little upset that it <laughs> yeah, wasn't I what I dreamt it would be. Yeah, when I, I can... That's okay. <laughs> I can imagine that with any kind of ensemble show like that, that it's tough for the actors because everybody wants to be more of the, have more story and be more of the star. And it just doesn't. And for the writers, that's why I don't, 
this wasn't the fault of anyone you know yeah, yeah. it was just the writers had to satisfy nine superheroes with the crossovers and everything yeah it's yeah. just not enough time to go into i'm always interested on the human element my mm -hmm. thing with big movies is always strip away a little bit of the phantasmic you know super cg battles like i'm kind of fatigued <laughs> on that not that in the background but i have it blurry and then tell me how these human experiences hit these people that I can relate to. Yeah. And so I'm always, that's what I'm always striving for, whatever I do, you know, if it's, if it's very, if it doesn't get into those depths, I'm usually very grumpy about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I would have liked to see a Hawkman um, TV series, frankly. And, and he has, I like I said, such an interesting background plus uh, you know, there's the whole Thanagarian aspect that they barely even touched on in the in the series and everything. So I always felt like, yeah. You, and then with Hawk Girl, it's just like have a show that that touches upon all these lives and, and how it made them, mm -hmm. and then always have a therapy session like Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> Smith in each yeah. episode. Because that's the other thing. Like, yeah. how the hell are you gonna like continue to try to be in love? in a non in a real world not where it's like we're meant to be and then we don't know why but but like mm -hmm. we want to be together we've we've done this so many times and i know everything about you and i know all your dark sides and it's like there was so much that i as a writer would have been so pumped about exploring yeah um, that i feel like they will do this eventually somebody will see the brilliance of this character i hope so um yeah. And the fortunate of the of this duo, yeah. it's the first superhero duo as well, you know, like one of the first, I think. I think so. And hopefully, focus in on that, you know. Yeah, I I think part of the problem with doing those type of shows is that they always seem to think that the audience only cares about yeah you know, they're only the fanboys are the only ones that matter and they only care about the action and the adventure and it's like you can have both and do more with the other parts. <laughs> you know so but especially on tv yeah i feel like in tv it's so hard to compete like let's face it i love the shows but if we're focusing on the action the movies are always going to win out yeah they just have more money. they have bigger more budget yeah. so to me, my thinking then is well let's not even try to compete let's do yeah. one sequence like badass or two <laughs> you know and make it work for the budget but then the rest human story yeah. you know just Strip it down. Well, I think that's why some of the shows that were the most successful were ones where they did focus more on that. Like, I don't know if you ever saw the Daredevil series on Netflix. It's fantastic. And he didn't have superpowers, kind of, kind of does. Well, I yeah, mean, yeah, he can yeah, see yeah. sort of even though he's blind. But I mean, he, his was mostly his fists and moving around. It wasn't a lot of CGI there. So uh, they focused right. a lot on his character and his relationships and that as well as the action because they didn't have to do so much cgi so, and they have one character right uh I mostly mean, one, one, one superhero character to, to focus hero character on for the most part yeah i mean they had a few other um shows and then they put them all together as a group eventually but yeah it was mostly him and his people but yeah so that it's definitely better um so when you got the role, did you know that it would only be for a limited time or did they leave it more up in the air and let's see what happens? Yeah, contractually, I knew I was only in the first two episodes, which was surprising. And I, I had to play this game of not sharing that with people and pretending like I'm a series regular, um, which which was just weird, you know, because we were on the posters and everything um, because they wanted this surprising death, which I loved that they did that. Mm -hmm. um i would have done it for the season and just kill us at the end and call it like a cw game of thrones moment <laughs> um but yeah that's 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 what i knew and then uh there was rumors at the time i knew that there was like we might bring you back uh nobody's ever dead in the cw uh superhero universe and then yeah they they brought me back in flashbacks and then you know it was pretty clear that we were going to be in the finale and all that. But uh, yeah, they kept it pretty hush hush. And I also yeah. think they didn't, they, they weren't sure what they were doing when they started the show. I think it was all, bit, from what I remember, um, Phil Klemmer will be a better one to know this. And 
but I think they were writing fast. They didn't have like a whole year to figure out the yeah. season and all that. You know, they were they were flying by the seat of their pants. Oh, okay, that makes that actually makes a lot of sense. Um, uh, and so when when we saw your wings, were they real or were they all CGI? They were CGI. The wings were all CGI. The flying, for most part, and in the beginning, I'm just turning off my phone and how this. Uh, there we go. Um, the flying was wire work, and yeah, but the wings were fully CGI. Ah, okay. You know, they they had another CW show uh, called Naomi. I don't know if you ever caught that one, where they it was sort of it was a weird show. It was it was on the periphery. I guess it was based on a comic, but it was sort of on the periphery of the DC universe. And they had a Hawkman. They didn't call him that, but he was a guy from Thanagar with the wings. But they never. But it only had one season, That's unfortunately. Smallville too, right? That well, the Hawkman was in Smallville as well. Yes, yes, yes. They, had, had they had an actual play. Hawkman in Smallville. Yeah, but on the the Naomi one was recent. They just it only lasted one season. Nice. Was it a cool? Was it a cool take on Hawkman? Well, again, they didn't say it was Hawkman, so it was kind of weird. <laughs> I liked it. I liked the whole wings thing, you know, and that was interesting. It was mostly about Naomi. Again, he was a side character, so <laughs> you know. Right, right, right. Yeah, they the, the the he's always been kind of underrated, you know. In each iteration, it's sort of like a, a side note, and he's so mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, I, I I don't know if you've heard, but the the new movie Black Adam has Hawkman in it as well as some yeah. other DC superhero. Yeah, and, and um, um, the actor. I hope uh, they go into the his human story. That's my my hope. I hope he's <laughs> not just a, a big bruiser with a mace flying around. Uh, I wanna I wanna see his <laughs> yeah. his personality. Yeah. Well, the actor plays him all this Hodge is a fantastic actor, and he's got a lot of personality. So if you I know, regardless, that. he should be doing a great job with that because he's amazing. Yeah. In fact, he was the first one on one interview I did. Years ago. Oh, nice. So, oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Now he's a big star. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Nice. Um, so uh, you said you're still in touch with some of the actors from Legends? Yeah. Casper Casper, and I just, you know, became friends. He he mm -hmm. was the one that started encouraging me to have kids. He's like, have a kid, Mr. Falk. Um, <laughs> and him together with others. That's what ended up happening. Um we're close. Sierra and I are still in touch. Okay. Not as much as I want to, but we've just both been busy and having busy lives. Um, and there's just some people I have, I didn't have that much of a private relationship with, but I just dearly enjoyed Brandon Routh. You know, I always, every time I see him, I tell him he's just such a wonderful dude. You know, he, he is a Clark Kent, you know, he's kind, <laughs> he's gentle. Um, Wentworth Miller, I, I, I hold dear. It's just a good, good person there's a lot of good souls on that project yeah that's good um and um i i noticed you don't have any traceable german accent even though you're from there i know you left when you were young and your, your parents uh probably have accents did you work to get rid of that or just happen yeah i worked my butt off and i i kind of just in general worked on shedding my identity to a fault you know now yeah. i'm now i don't have that anymore but yeah it's just you come to hollywood as a german and you want to become a superhero for example mm -hmm. i mean i always ask this when people go oh really you really think there's a you know a thing with germans and i'm like name one character in mm -hmm. hollywood history that is german and saves the world <laughs> it is not allowed you can be spanish you can be italian you can be black white asian but you cannot be german and be a good guy Hmm, that's uh, and it's true, silly yeah. you know it's all we 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 there is none you know yeah. christoph waltz he, he's a great actor but it's eccentric or evil yeah right that's also yeah. just his what he does and all that but like snegger did yeah. it he had to be comically large and <laughs> yeah. hero ass and he still played americans which was ridiculous because <laughs> yeah. You know, he's like, yeah, I'm from Boston. I'm from the CIA, you know, and you're like, no, you're not. No, you're not. Uh, but he, he did that, you know, and he and also, again, he's not German. He's Austrian. Yeah. Um, that's true. I'm not sure most Americans so, yeah, make that distinction. Away, the what? 
I said, I'm not sure most Americans make that distinction. They probably all think yeah, that's, that's, that's true. <laughs> um, yeah, so I ran away from that identity. I just wanted to be American. And the I irony is that I actually lost my German citizenship just recently because I was trying to extend my passport. I had become an American, huh. um, which I didn't know was illegal for a German. And so the embassy took up my passport and ripped it up and said, you are no longer German. And I oh said, wow, that seems intense. And I feel like you're the only country that does that. But so technically, I'm not even German anymore. Wow, that's excessive. <laughs> I know, I know. It's like when they rip up your credit card when you can't at the cashier. <laughs> wow, that, but that's worse. That's like your identity. That's man <laughs> and it's weird because you just sort of go what do you mean i was born there i speak the language my parents <laughs> are there like it's just a weird bureaucracy yeah. that uh i just don't understand and i've never liked that was one thing about my country i've never liked yeah they're way yeah, too they, much into their rules and laws yeah i've heard about some of that like they, they have really strict naming rules if you have a child and things like that naming rules tell me about the naming rules well i i just heard that if if you name your kid, you can't name them something weird. You have to go by certain rules. I, I, don't, I don't know, know if that's still that. true. I know some weird name German, so I have a hard time believing that's true, but maybe. Who knows? No, I'd have to look it the up. The world is changing at a rapid pace. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, so, um, yeah, so you've had a very interesting life and moved all over. Uh, so you call Oregon home now? That's good. That's good. So, uh, and yeah. you just had a movie come out this summer, Swap Me Baby, right? Uh, so how did, did you, how did that yeah, do? Yeah. No, I saw the trailer. It looked very interesting. We'll watch <laughs> it. Um, it was great. Uh, how did it do financially? We're still in the selling process, and it did not do that well uh, initially. It, it's really difficult to advertise and market on the level that our film was and with the budget sure. that we had. Um and I, I've been trying to explore different ways of distribution and marketing. I don't, I don't see the old way sustaining proper storytelling. Mm -hmm. You know, I think very outspoken about, I see our culture and society in great danger on many, many levels. Everybody's mm -hmm. terrified. Everybody is scared, depressed, lost, right? Who can I trust? And I think artists, storytellers, painters, uh, everyone, um, somebody once said that they kind of, artists are responsible for the health of a culture, of the mental mm -hmm. health, spiritual health, because they're supposed to inspire. They're supposed to engage your mind to think out of the box. Sure. They're supposed to give you an outlet to purge any emotions stuck in you. You got to grieve and you can't grieve. Watch something that makes you cry, you know? Mm -hmm. And... And they're supposed to start the conversation. Mm -hmm. And we have entered an age where Hollywood is just scrambling to know what the audience wants. Mm -hmm. And we're in this loop of regurgitation of story mm -hmm. and trope, not even tropes. I think tropes are great. I think genres are great. Their limitations are good. But, you know, what we're spending money on and that gets all the budget, it's not... It's not artists going, I have an idea. Yeah. It's a franchise that we know works at this. We know the algorithms. The audience wants to see more of this. And so it's all, almost like the audience decides what us artists can talk about mm -hmm. versus us artists saying, I'm inspired. I just took some mushrooms and I went through this crazy life experience. Let me tell you about it because it's brand new for me. Right. It's inspired. That's and then the audience goes around the water cooler and goes, did you see that thing, that crazy dude that made that thing or that crazy girl, you know, like, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And that's been reversed. You know, I see now the water cooler conversation dictates what the artists are doing. Yeah. Well, I think you're and right. You're, you're definitely right about movies, big budget movies and, and yeah, uh, movies. This is, this TV. is very, yes, this is very uh, applicable to to film tv i think is a little different than that yeah i especially think yeah uh non-broadcast tv and uh you know all the streaming well i think the movies are being unfortunately financially affected the same way broadcast tv is with the streaming and the video games so they're going with what's safe 
rather than well, but you yeah. have no business in say like I, I i i say to investors i say to the studios if you're in the movie industry for safe and finances get the fuck out of it it's not <laughs> yeah. what we're supposed it's not what yeah. we're supposed to be. You know, I know that's what it's become. I know it's show business. I'm not yeah. stupid. I understand yeah. that. But I am at a point where I'm like, it was never a safe bet. It's for gamblers. It's for passionate people. It's for people that can go bankrupt and come back. You yeah. know? Um, and so I think we've just become kind of really dull uh, in our, how potently we can affect a culture with our art. Because movies but, were strong. Yeah. They were a strong school. That's true, especially like in the 70s, uh, in that era. They... And they have shaped, and they st that's the other worrying thing. They do still shape how we behave. I mean, the superhero thing, I hate to say this, but it started that everybody needs to do CrossFit and needs to be in the best shape of their lives, which is, stu is, is not yeah. good. Yeah. It, it sends messaging that is not human. Because there's nothing human about superheroes that you can relate to. Some some movies and shows try, but let's face it, like I'm not really gonna feel feel for the atom. Yeah. You no. Know? Yeah. In that way. I'm gonna have a good time. I'm not gonna hate on the atom or the rock. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm <laughs> just saying I'll have a good time. I'll be entertained. I'll have emotions. There's artists involved. Of course they're gonna instill that. Right. But I really gonna see myself in him. It's very difficult. He's well, thank so goodness for the, the indie movies because there are quite a few of them. Whether people get but to they watch don't shape them or our minds. <laughs> they don't. They don't tell the narrative. Yeah, it's the mass. It's the mass narrative that most people follow. So I, I just want people to yeah. be aware and and um. Yeah, what are we digesting? What is the messaging that we're just succumbing to? You know. Unfortunately, I think that most people, uh, when they go to the movies or watch the thing on tv they just they don't want to think they just want to sort of lay back and be entertained and not think because they don't want to think know. about their day or whatever That's very unfortunate. We're, we're not a very thoughtful uh society i don't think that not right now i think we used to be yeah maybe I think, we, yeah, I think you're so right i think we've just become too busy nobody has even time to check in on themselves. You know, I do a lot of trauma release and I facilitate plant medicine. So I work with people that are struggling right now mm -hmm. in life, physically or mentally or whatever it is. And yeah. what I see as the greatest disease is a lack of self-care. Most people have no idea how their body is feeling, where they're tense, where they're tight, where they're ill, where they're sick, how they're eating, how they're being treated. They're yeah. running. Yeah, no, I agree with that no, and yeah, I, I'm that. I always thought I was a fairly positive, happy-go-lucky person. And I'd gone through a really bad childhood, and I was, but I was, you know, eh, things will turn out because things had already always turned out after that. And this pandemic, and turning sixty, which I didn't, <laughs> and all these things Great. together. What? You look fantastic. Oh, thank you. I, I'm lucky. Lucky jeans. My hair has not gone gray, and. Good jeans. <laughs> Thank happy. you. You look happy. You look sweet. You look. I look um, that way. Yes, I very. I smile very easily. But uh, I started uh, taking um, what do you call it? Uh, therapy online um, earlier online. this year. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you to do because that. I just can't cope sometimes, and I again too busy, too many things going on, and I'm just like overwhelmed. And you're not. Let me tell you this. You're not alone. First know, of all, thank you for sharing this. That takes a lot of courage. I hope you don't edit it out. Oh, um, no. I'm, I, I'm an open book. <laughs> I love that. No, I think, listen, everybody listening that has any any feelings like this that relates, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. It has been, this is what I love about this time. I, I went and got a car. I'll just tell you this story. There will be a point to the story. We've been sharing a car with my father because he lives in Europe and we've been he's he's been here not enough time so we could use the car. And we were like, let's not waste money. Now he's living in more. We need a car. And we were going about and the economy, it is for us, we were like, are we gonna do this? This is, you know, like is this the time to buy a car? And really, like, seriously, like, you know, I'm an actor, people think I make a shit ton of money, but it's not the, the narrative that they tell you of how these things work. They're not never the same. Anyway, long story short, I get triggered sometimes with car salespeople where I'm like, you guys are fucking, why is it so expensive? Blame me. 
right? Yeah, yeah. And I just started it a little bit with, with this one car sales guy. And then I just stopped and looked at him. And he was this young kid, like mid-20s. Mm -hmm. And I just looked at him and I go, what am I talking to you about? You know what I'm talking about. I know that you are having the same problems I have with paying bills, with being overwhelmed to live right now, despite not even to think about your dreams and who you really are and the, you know wanting to be loved, all those things. And I just said to him, I was like, you know, and it was this really lovely. He smiled and he felt seen and I felt seen by him. And it was like, yeah, it's getting so bad that no matter what class you're from, what color you're from, what gender you are, it's like we're relating on we're like, no, we're in this. This sucks. I don't know what I'm not a big like the government is at fault. I think our system that we're all participating in sucks. It is almost unmanageable for most. I feel blessed that I can ask for help, that I do what I do with the medicine work and the therapy like you. But it ain't a piece of cake right now. Mm -hmm. For anybody no. out there struggling, you're doing good if you if you just woke up and you're going through your day and you're kind to your family and you're managing to just get through. Um, it is no joke. And yeah, I encourage yeah. you to ask for help if you need it. Really do. Yeah, definitely. Um, um, so did you buy the car? I did. <laughs> I did. We bought an F-150. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> Ford F-150 and we got a fairly good deal and you know we got payments and we just needed it and also at this point I, I really am a believer that money is going to we are going to blow out the money system fairly soon here it is so expensive like grapes mm -hmm. are $18 in Los Angeles a friend of ours had a $1,400 electric bill and that wasn't like a a fancy giant house like yeah it's come to the point where we where it will collapse. So I'm happy to at least have a car standing out there that I can use and maybe <laughs> use for work. And yeah, you know. Well, I'm sure it's much cheaper up in Bend than it is in LA. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I yeah. couldn't. I don't know how all my friends in LA are still alive. It's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. It's the big cities are expensive. Um, we we moved here from Hawaii, and Honolulu is like super super expensive. We're in Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> Go back to Hawaii. That sounds amazing. It was wonderful. Have you been there? I have not been, but I've been. Oh, you know, you've been all Kim, over the world. You have been to Hawaii. <laughs> I've not been to Hawaii. And Kim, Kimberly, my, my life partner and uh, uh, my co-star for Swap Me Baby, she, um, she's she been dreaming of going to Hawaii. So oh, hopefully soon. you gotta go. You gotta go. It's uh, wonderful. It really is paradise. And living there was amazing. It's just like. Yeah. Nothing can compare. I mean, it's very experience. beautiful here where we are. There's lots of trees and it's very pretty and the people are nice, but it's not Hawaii. <laughs> what an experience. Yeah. No, we've lived all over, dude. Not like you. I mean, not internationally. <laughs> it's um, it's the same. You know, America is, is such a big country. It's like, yeah. like five times Europe, you know. it's Yeah, that's true. Many different and cultures. So IMDb says that you've got three movies that your new movies you're working on. Um, the bio that they sent me said that you founded a company, Patronage Film. Are these movies via your company? And have you started uh, on? Re no. Go ahead. I just turned up the volume and got a little quiet. But um, IMDb is funny, and so is Wikipedia. Uh, no, they're not always accurate. Birthday on there. Oh. Have you changed <laughs> my birthday? To the 31st of March, I'm saying this publicly now, 31st mm -hmm. of March, 1982, I'm 40 years old. Mm -hmm. And they keep changing it back. So, um, and I don't know who it is that thinks they are <laughs> fact-checking on me. And I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe it's my own team uh, that wants people to think I'm younger. <laughs> but um, but on the movie side, no, Swap Me Baby was the only one that we've done right now under Patronage Film Umbrella. Um, uh -huh. recollection is one that I don't know if it's on yet that comes out next year that I've already shot. Um, and then there are some others on there that I haven't heard from in over 10 years, like the Redeemer. Oh, um, oh you have. Okay. So the Redeemer and what is, there's one called Stony Brook that says it's in pre-production. Stony Brook. We have developed that for a long time. Yeah. Um, Jesse Lumen and I have worked with, um, 
the writer to make that happen. It's a great story. And, yeah, that's interesting. and just with what happened in Hollywood and my departure a little bit from Hollywood or my uncertainty of my relationship to Hollywood um, through, through the vaccine mandate yeah. kind of changed everything. And I'm just finding new ways and meeting new communities and seeing where everything falls and how people are feeling and if things yeah. change, you know? So oh, does it have any relationship to Stony Brook University? That's what I was curious about because I went there. <laughs> it was Stony Brook's New York, right? Yeah. Or is it, or is it Massachusetts? I don't I always know. New York. Well, Stony Brook, New York. New York is the area and then there's a college, the university there. Yeah. So it's related to that. I think he wrote it based on the uh, environment of Stony Brook like that. Oh, okay. that uh, cultural climate, economical climate, and all that in that time, but um, no, it's it's not related to that. It's now actually called American Sons. Oh, okay. And I noticed that uh, you have that movie Redeemer. Is that one that you're going to be working on, or so long ago that I met with um, with the filmmaker in in Malibu back in the day. I haven't heard anything in a, in a long time. Oh. It was another really great story. Thomas Jane was attached back then. Um, I, I don't know what happened with it. Who knows? So oh. many movies never make their yeah. funding. It never pulled through. Oh, that's a shame because I really liked the that you had uh, the, Katie McLean and John Lindstrom were co-stars and um, I really liked them. I've interviewed them before. And in fact, I might be interviewing Katie later this oh, month. So. Just told me that. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't even know that, but no, that's I haven't I haven't been contacted by the filmmakers in a while. Hmm. Cool. Well, I hope it works out. You know, they're big daytime <laughs> soap stars. That's why I know them. <laughs> and uh, so the really good actor. She just won an Emmy last year. So uh, oh, nice. Yeah, so it would be great. I hope you get to work with them. <laughs> Thank you. I hope so. So, is there anything else you got uh, coming out that you'd like to tell us about? That's such a good question always. Um, yeah, it's not film related. You know, I'm, uh, right now I got to find the new investor patron, you know, somebody that understands to support film minus needing the, uh, you know, the financial gain. Mm -hmm. And other than that, I've just been really involved with medicine work, plant medicine, you know, whether that's Santa Maria or, or psilocybin or ayahuasca. And I'm really interested in changing the way we do things in the storytelling word, providing mm -hmm. fair wages, providing kind treatment, providing a fertile ground for inspiration, getting out of this money is the be all and end all system. Right, right. And beyond that, helping people uh, wake up to the fact that they create every moment of their lives. They... They got to take care of themselves. They got to, you know, the ones that aren't feeling good and that are feeling crushed by the burden to yeah. just sort of say, you got, you got it, you know, you got it. You're okay. And there's plenty of us to help. There's so many people oh, that yeah. feel this way and they go, you know what? Call me up, <laughs> figure something out. There's donation-based work left and right. There's just wonderful people willing to say enough. Let's, let's right. unite. Do you, you have know, a website that, that people can go to or a way they can for contact For that you? specific thing, for trauma release, and it can be big trauma, little trauma, it can be physical. You know, I work a lot with whether it's cancer or whether it's, um, you know, uh, eczema, like physical ailments. They're usually always connected to psychological um, or, or lived experiences then manifesting into illness. Uh, you can write me at Breath of Change 2020. Okay breath of change 2020 at gmail.com you can either work with me personally um or i can facilitate many many people out there that you can go to that are affordable or some sometimes even free um to seek help so breath of change 2020 at gmail.com or if you forget and you're more of a social media person just go on my instagram at, at falkenshaw um and just send me a DM. Right now, I'm still very much personally checking on that. All my other socials, I'm never on. So Facebook, I check once a year. Uh, <laughs> I'm so bummed. Adrian Paul reached out to me via his assistant. If it's really his assistant, I don't know. But 
to be on uh, his podcast. I was a huge Highlander fan. I don't know. Oh if you yeah. Know that show. Oh, I love that show. Yeah. And I and I found that message a year too late because I just uh-huh. never I never check in on Facebook. Yeah, that's that's and terrible. Check out Swap Me Baby on Amazon iTunes and soon on Tubi and all the other AVOT platforms, hopefully, if we can get it on there uh, this October. Okay, Out cool. right now, for purchase and rental, and then hopefully on the AVOTs very soon. There was something else I was going to ask you. Oh, you're into the plant medicine and all that. Um, did you hear about the what uh, President Biden just announced? No. Oh, he said that he, they're going to... Uh, he pardoned all of the people that had been uh, imprisoned federally for possession of marijuana. I think that's wonderful. Yeah, that makes sense. I think in general drugs, Portland had a, uh, not Portland, Portugal had a right legalizing all possession of all drugs. Yeah. Because then you can come forward and say, I got a problem. Yeah, right, you know? exactly. And I never understood, like, alcohol can be so destructive. And yeah. it's fully legal. Somebody wants to shoot up heroin, they're going to shoot it up, make yeah. it so that they can at least say, hey, I'm taking heroin, I need help. So I yeah. think that's a first step. I, I commend him for it. Uh, whether you like him or not, I think that's a great exactly. thing. And, exactly. It's not uh, really political. Yeah. I mean, or, if, yeah, I mean, and he say, he's also saying that he's trying, he said that he thinks that the state should do the same thing. And uh, what was the other thing? Oh, they're they're looking into changing the whole way they they go forward with the legalities of it, uh, you know, so that they hopefully won't put any more people in prison <laughs> for Good. just for for having they some should, especially cannabis, you know. Yeah, like it's like this stuff is natural and it grows, and you can make it at home. Why does the government have to step in and decide that they know what to do with it? Yeah, and it's legal in so many states. Even even here in Arkansas, we have legal uh, legal medicine, uh, you know, medicinal use of it. I think we're getting close to a federal. I think we're getting close to a federal decision sooner or later. You know, if not this president, then the next. At least on cannabis, because it's like, yeah. You know, everybody gets high these days, especially pandemic. It saved a bunch of lives because sure if you did, weren't, yeah. you know, drinking a little alcohol or a little stone <laughs> in the pandemic. I don't know how good for you. you know? I understand. No, I just over decorated my house at the holidays. That's how I dealt with the pandemic. The nice. first year, anyway. Nice. That's a great <laughs> like, way to do oh, it, too. You got a giant I do not life-size skeleton. Taking drugs. I just say, do I'm, you. Yeah, you got to do what, what's good for you. Uh, well, I thank you. I've gotten to the end of my list of questions. I really appreciate it. Thanks and for um, having me on. Thanks for yes. having a conversation with me. Yeah. Being open-minded, being an open book. Um, That's me. <laughs> sharing yourself like that. And letting me eat my carrot. Oh, sure. <laughs> You're supposed to say, what's up, that? <laughs> um. Wish you all the best, and I hope to talk to you again sometime. All right. Thank you. See you later. Take care, sweetheart. Bye. Bye. Let's see.